In this video, we're going to go over five Obsidian plugins that are super simple and easy to use, and they just make your quality of life in Obsidian so much better. Obsidian plugins are the absolute best part of Obsidian. They can really help you customize your workflow for your exact needs, but knowing which plugins are the best ones for you is one of the trickiest things. So that's why I like putting videos like this together, but I also been working on a really cool collection of my top recommended plugins. And I decided to put that together in one place so that you can filter by your specific need. So this is something I put together for free. You can check it out in the description and that is going to help you find the right plugins for you. So definitely go take advantage of that. But with that said, hope you enjoyed this video. And let's get started with plugin number one on this list, which is going to be OmniSearch, one of the most popular Obsidian plugins. In Obsidian, when installed by going to the gear icon, community plugins, browse, and you're going to search OmniSearch by Simon. Install it, enable it, and you are ready to go. Right, so for this one, let's just close this. Here I have some notes, right? Here I have something on Stoic philosophy in the discovery of the atom, the origin of the printed press, just some example notes. Now there's a couple of ways to search in Obsidian. The default way to search in Obsidian is gonna be with something called the quick switcher. I open the command palette and if I search quick switcher, you can see that this also has a shortcut by default. So control O, that's usually the way that I open that. Control O, and now I can search my notes. So something about the atom, it'd be right there. Something about the printing press, it'd be right there. There you go, right? But what happens if you have something very specific that is not in the title of the note and you want to have better access at seeing that quickly? So let's just try to come up with an example. Let's say something in here about the solar system. Perfect. Okay. So let's just close this. So if I search for solar system, you can see, okay, I get no results. But I know I wrote something about the solar system. So as an alternative, you can go right here to search. And now if I search solar system, I'll be like, okay, nice. Found it right there. And this is definitely a really nice way to search for things, but sometimes you want something that is a little bit snappier. I mean, if you could just combine both, if you could have something like this combined with the more powerful features inside of this, that is when you get the power of Omni Search. So Control P, open the command palette, and we're gonna search for Omni Search. So here it gives us the option of search across our whole vault. A vault in Obsidian is just everything that is in your files right here. So that that is your vault. So Control P, Omni Search. And now check this out. We can go solar system. And now we have a really nice snappy way to expand the quick switcher functionality. Solar system, and it even takes me to the part where it talks about it right here, right? The only thing I would say is maybe add a shortcut if you like, because otherwise you have to search it every time, omni search manually, and then, then you can use it. Instead, I think it's better to add a shortcut. So we're gonna go to settings, hotkeys, omni search, Vault search, this is the one that we were using and the one that I recommend. By default, Control O opens a normal quick switcher. In this one, it's very intuitive for me to do Control Shift O. Control O, this is a normal one. And now Control Shift O, the Omni Search. Solar system, boom, there you go. So for instance, here we're in another file. There's something about living in accordance with nature. So just to search it, we can search what about nature? It takes me specifically to that part, which is great. So super handy, very powerful, very fast. So that's definitely my favorite way to search things in Obsidian. All right, so up next, we have something called typewriter mode. Let me show you what problem this solves here in Obsidian. All right, so whenever you're in Obsidian and you start writing something, start writing something. And as you write more and more and more and more and more and more and more, you'll notice that you kind of ran out of space and now you're writing all the way down at the bottom of the screen. Personally, it does bother me a lot. You might end up bending your neck and worsening your posture because you're trying to look at the very bottom of the screen to write. So that is what typewriter mode solves. There you go. You can see that now we have this gray bar, but now you can see that as I keep writing, 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 we always stay centered at the middle of the screen. So here's an example of writing something at length and seeing how nice of an experience that is. Awesome. Now, if you do not like this gray bar that happens in every line. Thankfully, that is very easy to remove. So back to the settings, typewriter mode, settings right here. You scroll down, you will notice that in here, I'm particularly using a dark theme. So all you need to do to remove that is just delete this. If you're in a light theme, you can also delete that right there. There you go. And now we don't see that gray bar anymore. Now, optionally, you could also just write a color in here and now you have a red. Now, of course, that red is very ugly. Even if you just type something like blue, it's gonna be like pure blue. So it's not the nicest color, it's actually quite ugly. So something, if you do happen to like the line, but you want to change the color. So what you can do is you can go to google.com. This is a URL, if you've never seen it before, and you search hex color. Now you're gonna have a really nice way to pick the exact color that you like. Now what you can do is you can just copy this. You can just press in there or just copy the whole thing. And now you can paste that in there. 
and that is going to change to the exact color that you like. Or you can just delete it and now you don't have a bar anymore. There you go. Our next one is going to be double shift. So this one is a nice handy shortcut that I personally really enjoy. So let's search for double shift. There you go. This one right here. Install it, enable it, and by default it already works. Okay, so what this does is normally to open the command palette, you do control P. Control P is essential because that's where we find any command of anything we want to do in Obsidian. So it's definitely the most used shortcut. Now what double shift does is that it opens the command palette, this one right here that we usually use control P for. So that's all I'm doing in my keyboard. I'm pressing the key shift twice, shift, shift, boom, there you go. It's a really nice thing. I don't know about you, but I really, really love that. It's a very simple plugin, but it allows you to do that. Now the plugin technically does allow you to do a couple more things. So by default, it works like that. If you hover over this, you'll notice that it already is set so that whenever you press this key twice, it opens a command palette. Now we could add something such as, okay, what about opening the quick switcher? So I want to open the quick switcher, but instead of using the shift, because that's already, you can have the same key for both things. If you hover over this, it shows you that the, the quick switcher is gonna be open with, I recommend something like the alt key, depending on if you're in a Mac or not, you might have option, but either way, alt. And now that means that if I press alt twice, boom, it opens a quick switcher and now I can navigate quickly to whatever I want. Oh yeah, definitely do not recommend adding letters, even though technically it's possible. It's usually for these type of keys. Keys like this, Shift, Alt, maybe Control, those are the ones that I would recommend, but it's a really nice handy thing that I really love. Pressing Shift twice, pressing Alt twice, it opens different things. I love it. Now for our next one, we're gonna take a look at recent files. And this is a really nice and snappy one. It just works straight out of the box. You don't need to do anything. And you go right here and you're gonna see a tab called recent files, right? Now, just for the sake of demonstration, we're just gonna open a bunch of files in different order. So we're taking a look at this file, then this file, then we're back to our daily page. Now we close things, right? I'd be like, okay, I remember that I was taking a look at this file, but I, I forgot what it's called. That would be the case. You can just say, okay, what are my recent files? Oh, okay. The last file that I opened was my daily note. Before that, it was this one. Before it was that one. And as you can see, as I open them, they change order because the most recent file is always going to go to the top. This is really something that you're going to really see the use when you start having a, a large amount of files. As you can see right here, I don't have that many. But in your real nodes, you're going to have hundreds of nodes. And eventually you're going to be like, oh, what is that node that I literally just opened, but I can't remember what it's called. Or you just want the shortcut to access it quickly. Now you have these recent files tab right here in the sidebar. And that is going to be a really nice handy thing that you can use. By the way, you can always rearrange this in case you like it on the right sidebar. You can drag and drop it there just in case. I do like having it there. That's the default. And that's where I like it, but you can always change it. So yeah, very simple one. It comes in handy when you have your hundreds of nodes and you just want to see which are the ones that you recently opened without having to search them every time. So that is a nice and simple one, recent files. All right, our next plugin is going to be paste URL into selection. All right, let me show you. Back here in Obsidian, let's create a new note. Example, using links. Okay, I really enjoyed reading this newsletter. It was great because it said nice things I agree with instead of things I disagree with, right? So now we want to link to the newsletter right here. All right, so here's the newsletter, right? So we grab the link. So as you go here and try to paste it on top of the word newsletter, you notice that it replaces it. So obviously what we want is to paste the link on top of the word newsletter. So how do we do this? In Obsidian, there is a format. What we have to do for it is we have to do a square bracket at the beginning, square bracket at the end of the word, parentheses, paste the URL, and then close parentheses. As you can see, that was tedious and a lot of work. So that is exactly when this plugin right here comes in handy. We go back to this newsletter, we can just copy the URL, and now as I select the text, I can just paste, boom, we're good to go. So that's such a much better experience. I just didn't do, again, you just paste it, boom, good to go. That's it, super simple plugin. It's so simple, but it solves such an annoying problem in Obsidian that it's definitely worth installing. So that is paste URL into selection. There you go. Now, Obsidian plugins can really help you customize your workflow for your exact needs. But like I said at the beginning, finding the right ones for you is quite tricky. That is why I put together this collection of the top plugins that I recommend so that you can filter for the ones that are most useful for you. Again, I'm offering this for free, so definitely take advantage of it. You can find more information about it in the description. So I hope to see you there.
Damn, you never stay. Feeling the change all in myself, my. See ya.